Bonnie Rasmussen, we support. Diana Moss, we support. Angel Burke, opposed. Doug Vincent, opposed. Dustin Cole, opposed. Fred Furlock, opposed. Naturally. formal testimony and I have two brief comments for the committee to consider. Please do not ignore the large body of scientific evidence and years of safety use that demonstrate the safety of the GMO products. I am very familiar with many of the GMO products in the marketplace today and I am only able to answer any questions that you might have. Also, the question before us on labeling is not a question of safety. Labeling is a means of trying to differentiate food products where no differences exist. There are no nutritional differences or valid safety concerns. The cost of the proposed bill will be significant to consumers, farmers, businesses, and taxpayers. The right to know should not be at the expense of everyone's right to afford meat. Thank you. Thank you. Joanne Young, opposed. Xavier Menendez Alvarez, support. Paul Archula, support. that is now used on these crops is now found in groundwater, surface water, and even rainwater throughout the Mississippi Basin, according to a recent study by the USGS. It's a fact that U.S. farmers have suffered more than a billion dollars in damage as a result of their crops being contaminated by genetically engineered varieties. Our rice farmers alone suffer about a billion dollars in damages as a result of contamination with genetically engineered rice just a few years ago. And numerous studies have suggested a link between ingestion of certain genetically engineered foods and serious 
abnormalities in laboratory animals and farm animals. Poll after poll has shown that a large majority of people throughout the country and in Hawaii want genetically engineered food labeled so that they can decide for themselves what to purchase, what to eat, what to feed their families, and what to serve to other people. Neither the companies that genetically engineer the crops, nor the farmers who choose to grow them for their own convenience, nor the companies that process them have a right to enrich themselves by forcing everyone to buy their food blindfolded. Secrecy at the expense of others is not an acceptable method of marketing or enhancing profitability. So I respectfully ask you to pass this bill. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you. Gary Hoosier. Thank you. Gary Hoosier, former senator, now councilman from Kauai. Good afternoon, members, chair, vice chair. My name is Gary Hoosier. I'm an elected member of the Kauai County Council. I'm speaking today on my own behalf as an individual. However, I wanted to point out, I think it's important that, uh, to point out that the Kauai County Council, Maui County Council, and Hawaii County Council have all passed resolutions in support of man mandatory labeling of GMO products uh, in the HPAC package, proposed package. I'm testifying today in strong support of House Bill 174, which requires specific labeling for food and raw agricultural commodities sold in the state. I think it's also important to point out that many nations around the world already require label, require labeling of GMO products, and that major U.S. grocery retailers are also now supporting national labeling, labeling requirements. The passage of this measure will add further momentum to the national movement to label the largest number of leaders in this effort. There are many reasons to support labeling, but the core principle is that people have the right to know and the right to choose what they are buying and what they are consuming. Some consumers are concerned about health implications of consuming GMO foods. Without question, the level of sensitivity to chemicals and food allergies varies tremendously from person to person, and without labeling, people are unable to make informed choices. Though there have been many numerous studies of health impacts of consuming GMO products, few of these studies have been conducted by independent researchers focusing on the long-term, long-term impacts on humans, specifically children and pregnant women. Other consumers, including myself, are equally concerned about the moral, ethical, and political implications of buying GMO products. And we also deserve the right to know and choose. These concerns include the environmental and social consequences caused by the commercialization and patenting of new life forms. These implications are far-reaching and yet largely unknown. Additionally, the globalization and ownership of the world food supply by a handful of multinational companies is detrimental to food sovereignty and threatens the foundation of traditional agrarian communities. The reduction of biodiversity caused by the concentration of a single dominant species developed through genetic modification will ultimately weaken that species and cause yet unknown impacts to related species. Transgenic foods created and crossing animal and plant genes have impacts we cannot begin to understand, and those with vegetarian diets based on religious uh, concerns deserve the right to know. Locally, the explosive growth of the GMO industry has driven up the cost of farmland to the detriment of farmers who actually grow food for local consumption. Most of the debate on GMO labeling focused on the health implications or the claim that GMO foods are substantially equivalent and that should not be labeled. However, there are precedents in law for additional reasons to mandate labeling of food items, including golf and safe labeling laws, which were enacted for environmental protection reasons. For these reasons, combined with the health and diet implications, myself and many other consumers believe we should be able to choose whether or not we would like to purchase and consume these products. <coughs> It is government's role and a fundamental responsibility to protect the health and welfare of the people and of the Aina. There is no question that more and more people are trying to take back control of their diets and to make better choices with regards to the food that they consume. I strongly urge this committee to unanimously pass out House Bill 174 and to support the right of the people of Hawaii to know what is in the food they are consuming and to make informed choices based on whatever reason they choose. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Good morning, everybody. My name is Jessica Mitchell. I am a concerned mother. Um, I'm here today because I support this bill. I and many mothers deserve the right to know what we are feeding our children, what we are eating ourselves. Um, and I would also like to point out to Mr. Perlack, if it is a money issue with labeling GMOs, why did Choi, Suji, Ido, Har, Say, and others start a bill that says they should label not GMO foods? So if that confuses me. Thank you for listening to my testimony, and I support this bill. Okay, Jessica White in support with John Naylor next in support. John Naylor. J.W. Nalga in support. Karen Chun in support. Her founder Hayden in support. Lance Atkins opposed. Lance Kosh in support. Lauren Zerbo, Hawaii Food Industry Association opposed. Lisa Andrews in support. Ooh. Lauren Mochito, W.H. Shipman in opposition. <coughs> German, Vice Chairman, members of the committee. Um, my name is Lauren Mochito, I'm the uh, Director of Agricultural Operations, uh, W.H. Shipman on the Big Island in KL. We currently lease lands to over 120 individual growers. Uh, the great shipment and the growers are strongly opposed to HB 174 relating to food labeling. <coughs> labeling requirements as regulated by the Food and Drug Administration is intended to communicate information that is relevant to health, safety, and nutrition. FDA states that there are no significant difference between foods produced using biotechnology and their conventional counterparts. The Hawaii Papaya Industry Association coordinates the deregulation of the genetically engineered rainbow papaya in the continental U.S. and Canada. Both countries do not require labeling of this safe papaya and was developed no differently than the conventional green techniques. Without the biotechnology of the rainbow papaya, there would be no papaya industry in the state of Hawaii today. USDA Environmental Protection Agency and FDA have already proven that the biotech rainbow papaya is safe for the environment for human consumption. Due to this, there are no federal or state requirements that these foods be labeled. We have been eating this delicious biotech papaya for over 12 years without any ill effect or side effects. Our growers are already struggling with high costs of production, processing, and transportation costs. Labeling requirements that are not necessarily ne not necessary are only increases the burden for these hard working wars. And I thank you for the opportunity to testify in HB 174. Thank you. Next testify Maria Mike Maikino in support. <coughs> Mike Byers Dog in opposition. Suko Hayakawa in support. Next up would be Raymond Foster in opposition. Yes. Hi. Um, my name is Miko Hayakawa. Um, I'm in support of HB 174 to label GMO foods. Um, I am a mother of three children. And I have known about GMOs in our food supply and site petition with the Organic Consumers Association to prohibit GMOs in the USDA organic standards many years ago. 
I consider myself to be more informed than the average consumer about natural foods. So I grew up in a religion that advocates natural farming. However, after moving to Hawaii from California four years ago, I had difficulty finding the organic products at prices I could afford. So there were times when I occasionally <coughs> bought conventional foods, but I always read the labels. However, last year when I started to do extensive research on GMOs and discovered to my horror that I have been buying products that contain them and have been feeding them to my children, had they been labeled on the package, I would not have bought them. I believe there are many mothers like me who would make different choices if GMOs were labeled, and for them I ask you to support this bill. Scientists admit that they still have much to learn about genes and gene technology. Just a couple of weeks ago, a discovery was made about the cauliflower mosaic virus that are present in most GMOs, including 54 of the already approved GMOs in our food supply. According to virologist Jonathan Latham, GMO regulators around the world have been complacent and incompetent. They have had the details about the um, cauliflower mosaic virus promoter even before GMOs were even ever approved, but are now identifying the danger. Now the scientist is calling on regulators to recall GMOs that use this potentially disastrous promoter and simply telling consumers that it is that if you want to avoid GMOs, you should eat organic is not taking into account the fact that millions of people are eating GMOs without their knowing and their consent. It is a human rights issue. I believe it is the responsibility of the food industry to inform the consumer <coughs> of what they are buying. They are the ones choosing to use substances that haven't been proven safe and not, and, and not from nature. And ultimately, it is our children who must pay the highest price with their health. Someday I believe it will be widely accepted that GMOs pose dangerous risks for health. And just like as we witnessed with the cigarette industry, would legislators who oppose labeling be willing to take personal responsibility for the health of my children and their peers? When that is the case, no. So I ask you today to support this bill and allow us, parents, to make informed choices on what we feed our children. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Lauren Maltos in opposition. Shannon Rudolph in support. Ty Lee Medeiros in opposition. Umani Cynthia Groves in support. William Bailey up next in support. Thanks. Aloha, Chairman and Committee. I'm Cynthia, when Mommy Cynthia grows, um, I, I am a healthcare practice management consultant of over 20 years. I've been studying the literature on GMOs uh, for, since 2003 when it was given to pigs. And, I was shocked to see that it was actually given to human beings at that point, so I started researching. Um, I did bring a number of um, studies that have been done, all submitted in testimony afterwards. The woman who spoke before me um, referred to the um, study that was done on uh, Regulators who discovered a hidden viral gene in commercial GMO prop, uh, crops that has widespread in, you know, implications um, in terms of um, the genetic mutation that happens, uh, particularly in our children. Uh, we're seeing amazing changes in AD, you know, with ADD. Um, we're seeing, uh, which is attention deficit disorder. Uh, we're seeing um, GMOs now being termed obesogens, con uh, contributing to uh, insulin resistance, which is widespread in Hawaii as well as across the nation. Um, these things are widely known in the scientific field, and I, I think we really need to start looking at this. I'm totally in support of um, 
Gary Hooser's comments. Um, it's absolutely what I experienced. I bring the testimony that came from Maui. There are over 80 people that testified, um, and we're 100% in support of genome labeling. Um, I also have a European study on GMO soy, um, the lack of transparency, the, the risks to the agriculture. Um, I think we need to, to really take these studies seriously. Um, I also, in terms of the bill itself on page two, I don't know if you have that bill in front of you. Do you? Okay. On page two, um, First line, um, maybe I'll refer to the number 1718 um, of page one, and then go to page one and two. Um, the organism from which the food is derived has been injected or otherwise treated with genetically engineered materials. It begins to say, except the use of manure as a fertilizer for raw agricultural commodities. It says it shall not be construed to mean that those commodities are produced with a genetically engineered material. Um, these kinds of exceptions are going to be harmful. And, uh, and I, I would change that word, I'll, I'll go into it, but I'll change that. I recommend changing it to the same, um, except, where it says except, include the treatment of genetically engineered manure as a fertilizer for raw agricultural commodities shall be construed to mean both those commodities are produced with a genetically engineered material. Now the problem with accepting it, okay, and this problem was, came in my late testimony, um, for for Bill 489, is that those, that Bill 489 that you were discussing um, exempts inspection of fish ponds. And those, the fish in those fish ponds are being fed GMO soy. And if they're fed GMO soy, that means that those are genetically modified modified and they're going into poop, which goes into fertilizers, and as it stands right now, that is not labeled, which means labeled, you know, GMO. So what that means is a lot of folks out there that are organic farmers are going to be not knowing that those fer that fertilizer is going to be put on their land, which is going to contaminate Okay, the Cynthia, land. can you summarize? Yeah. Okay, that's, that's a change I'd make. The other change I'd make in this bill um, is the section on page three. Um, it would be number D. The section shall not apply uh, to foods or raw agricultural commodities, and it lists a few things. It's a very simple fix just to say they shall apply, take out the word not, they shall apply but not be limited to foods or raw agricultural commodities. Okay, and the reason why... Okay, thank you. you know, okay. There is a good reason for doing it. Okay, we'll let you testify after everybody has had a chance. Okay, yeah. There wasn't much more to say, but... Yeah, I thank okay. you for the opportunity. Thank you.